the best night of the month, everyone. We are so glad that you registered and are joining us live for the Lipedema Patient Roundtable. I'm Brenda Viola with Lympha Press, and we are so proud to host this every month to answer your questions, to encourage your hearts, to have real talk about real life and how it impacts those with limp lipedema and how people are th not just surviving, but thriving with it. I have my esteemed panelists that I will introduce first. And just so you know, get your questions ready. We're gonna talk about everything tonight. Don't forget to put your questions in the Q&A. We are talking COVID boosters, homeopath homeopathic ways to forestall negative impacts, but let's introduce people first. Linda Ann Kahn. Hi, Marsha Witt, by the way, you're out there. Linda Ann Kahn, I actually got to visit her since the last time we were all together. I was at her amazing beauty clinic in San Diego, California. You've been serving the community there for what, 40 years or something? Yeah, but you know, I was only 10 when I opened, but yeah, this month, this really? year will be April will be 40 years. It's amazing. It's so funny. I went out to visit my cousin and I said, I'm going to meet my friend, Linda Ann Kahn. She said, Linda Ann Kahn, everybody out here knows her. <laughs> and it is such an amazing place. We'll get to talk about that a little bit later. We're so glad you're with us tonight, Linda Ann Kahn. And Susie Boshoff, lipedema.living. It's so wonderful to see you tonight. And you are looking good post COVID. Yeah, that was not fun for you or anybody who had it. We have the Lippy Butterfly, Angelique Charles, with us. And we're so glad that you could be with us, Angelique. We're all still recovering with joy from you sharing your song with us last month. It was amazing. You are amazing. And we love your message tonight about self-care, which is wonderful. Cheryl Skolage, Lipedema Diva, we are glad to have you with us tonight. And you also are feeling on the upswing. There's been a lot of, you know, sniffles and maybe a little bit more around the table since we last got together. So I'm glad that you're feeling better, Cheryl. All right, PGP, getting ready for surgery number six. Six. It is coming up before the next round table. So we're going to talk about her prep for that and also her concerns about getting the booster shot and what to do with compression after you've been boosted. Patty Cornu, Lipedema Fitness, we love you. She has warned us that she might have a little cough because, you know, we are all gotten our little sniffles and, and stuff like that. We love you, Patty. We're so glad you're with us tonight to talk all things fitness. And you had a really cool post about fundamental movements that I hope we can get to tonight as well. And then you invited the amazing Dr. Melissa Gallagher, who we are so glad to welcome yet again. Dr. Gallagher, thank you for being here. We appreciate you. And I sent you some questions from the audience that revolve a lot around knees. Now, I only know we have Dr. Gallagher for just 30 minutes. So I do wanna start out with the COVID conversation like I said we would. And I also want to acknowledge Holly Hope is out there, Christy Curry, my buddy, Lisa Lugo, Heather Zunker, Angie Hampton, our girl Casey's out there tonight and Jeannie Proctor, Marsha Witt and the whole gang is here. And we are so glad to welcome you. Thank you for giving us an hour out of your month to be encouraged. We really care about you. And so we're glad that you're here. So we have some questions that have come in, but first things first. Oh, by the way, people are saying that they do your lymphatic exercises every morning. Marsha Witt said that, and Dr. Gallagher, we applaud you for that. That's awesome. So COVID, first of all, Linda Ann Kahn, you said that you have this blend that you do that's really helped your patients. What are you talking about? Well, you talk, there were two things we were talking about. One is that it, if you're going to be having the booster, if you haven't already had it, there is a homeopathic routine that you can do to mitigate the bad effects. And one is suya, and I'm sure Dr. Gallagher knows everything I'm saying here, but suya is a homeopathic, it's T-H-U-J-A. You take it just before you have the shot and just after. And then an hour later, you take activated charcoal. And then for a week, you take 
um, N-acetylcysteine, which helps, it's a precursor to glutathione, it's for the liver. You also take quercetin, Epsom salt baths, and there's one other thing, I'm just trying to think what else it was. No, that's it, and vitamin D. And that routine, 95% of my people who have done that have did not have bad effects from the, the virus. Well, from, that from is- the booster. Yeah. Astounding, because everybody wants to, first of all, not get it. How many of you at this table had people in your immediate family or your household that got COVID recently? Yeah. So, you know what it's like, I had house guests. I was so excited that my sister and brother-in-law were visiting me and we had to quarantine from each other because they got it. And so we're all being super careful. And are there particular impacts for lipedema patients that we need to be aware of? And Susie, you just got through this. So maybe you'd want to speak to that. I mean, I'm not trying to create haters and I don't have an opinion either way. There was, I did a little bit of research and because I'm so sensitive in different capacities, I have a history of blood clotting on my family. And um, I'm also allergic to um, polysorbate 80 mm. and um, polyethylene glycol. And even though they don't say anything when you get vaccinated and it might be why some people have a really bad reaction, but the Moderna and the Pfizer one both have polyethylene glycol and polysorbate 80 in them. And the J&J &J has this whole whatever thing on the blood clotting. So for me, I had to figure out how to just yeah. tackle my immune system without adding anything to it. So we did very unorthodox stuff, lots and lots of vitamin D and quercetin and maybe some horse dewormer that just helped right away, quite frankly. Okay, so, well, this is, here's the caveat for everyone. Everybody's journey is individual. Yeah. And we offer information. We do not offer medical advice on the show, but really, I like your point about knowing what the ingredients are and how they might impact your body because that can help you make the right decisions. I just want to say something. I actually found out about those two, um, that the polyethylene glycol, when I was researching food ingredients in the colors that I use for my gummy bears. And then there was this whole thing on polysorbate 80 and I was already sensitive to it. So then I Googled the side effects of polysorbate 80 and actually it was an article on the CDC's website that had all of this stuff. This was right before the vaccines even became available locally. Wow. So wow. I walked into it already with this knowledge and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to approach this 100% holistically. Yeah. So then I was really digging into the research on how to do that. Luckily, our entire family got it. Everybody in the family got it because we gave it to each other Christmas day. We had a wonderful Christmas day, but even my mother-in-law um, who has cancer and is doing cancer therapy and she's over 70. So she's very mm. high risk. She was asymptomatic. They actually found out she had COVID for a totally disrelated situation. And she was wow. like, oh, that makes sense. Oh. Wow. And I was like, well, thank you for sharing that. Sandy Darley, by the way, is saying to Melissa, you were a lifesaver during the early days of COVID. Uh, so I want to know, inquiring minds want to know more. Why were you a lifesaver, Dr. Gallagher, during the early days of COVID? Sure. Well, I started, um, you know, I think many of you probably know I have a YouTube channel of, as part of my kind of community outreach, um, apart from my practice. And with all the changes and my son being home uh, for his preschooling, I moved my um, my YouTube outreach to a daily live show. And so I would communicate science-based, fact-based uh, research and information from the early days. And even last January, last January, actually two years ago, so January 2020, uh, the first week of January, I posted about the, the pandemic coming our way to my community. So um, I think that's what they're referencing. I, yep. I basically did this live show for over a year and then can continue to communicate because there is a lot of misinformation, a lot of, um, uh, I would say in this very lovingly that there are a lot of couch experts. Um, and so, you know, I've tried to weed through 
a lot of the information to help people um, understand how to protect their bodies, how to protect their immune system, um, and really help people understand what our immune system is capable of, of achieving, and then also our limitations when it comes to an, a very novel virus like the current state. So well, you I think a, that's what well, they're referencing. Yeah, they are. Of course they are. And what a great service that you provided to the community. Information is powerful, and you have the right and the ability to sift and sort what resonates and what works. And that's why we love hearing everybody's individual stories. I love our chat because I love the people that join this round table. They're all full of love. They're like, Susie, nobody could hate you. Come on. You know, we are all in this together and we are we're a team. So pale ginger pear, tell all you had just had arm surgery. Yeah. So surgery in August was arms and saddlebags and back of the butt shelf, but like, um, I was concerned because this was going to be the first shot in my arm since surgery. I didn't know how it was going to react. I didn't know what it was going to do. So, but I knew I still wanted to get the booster, especially with the kid back in school and then upcoming February surgery. So I went and had the booster done and then I was getting ready to put my arm compression on and I was like, Ooh, maybe I shouldn't put the pressure and let like the medicine like slowly work its way versus like, compressed so I text Dr. Earp so it was like so I just had the booster can I put my arm compression on and she was like yes it's actually better to have mm. it on she's like put it on she's like, but if you start to feel pain or like lightheaded or something she's like take it back off but like wear it so I put it on I had well, no issues speaking of haters everybody's sort of like wow you got to text Dr. Herbst <laughs> All right. Well, we know we know you're the star of the show. That's for sure. Uh, here's very important information. Victoria Bowden wants you to know, Angelique, that your hair is so cute tonight. I mean, these are important things. <laughs> and before I lose Dr. Gallagher, I'd love to go through some of these questions that Patty Cornute got from her group. And feel free to weigh into. Why don't you share with us, Patty, how these questions came in and what the general theme is? And I'll be glad to go through them one by one if you'd like. Um, I posted about the upcoming uh, roundtable tonight and was, you know, asking for any information. I kind of filled them in on some of the topics that we're looking to talk about and see if anybody has any questions. And I got to say the past couple of weeks, knee pain has just been, you know, overwhelming, you know, concern in my group. And I'm sure a lot of it has to do with fitness. It can impede you, you know, being active and, you know, people are concerned. Is it, you know, we hear a lot that it's a common thing with lipedema and sometimes it's the inside of the knee. Sometimes it's the outside of the knee. Sometimes it's one knee and not the other knee. And is there better sleeping positions to help with knees? Um, I know with the size of my legs, when I sleep at night, that contributes to how often I flip from side to side and to back because the shape and size of my legs make, you know, the way my knees kind of hang when you sleep on your side really uncomfortable and it'll get to a position in the night where it'll wake me up and then I'll kind of roll over to the other side. Wow. So there were just lots, lots of questions coming through and people wanting some help with that. Wow. So I'm going to throw to you, Dr. Gallagher. I also want to ask anybody, look, uh, people are saying that they flip like a rotisserie chicken at night with their knees. Uh, knee problems. Anybody else on the panel? Okay. All right. So the questions include knees and ankles and hips are high pain areas. Can Is there any clarity or connection between those problem areas and lipedema. So Dr. Gallagher, take it away. And I see you lot nodding too, Linda Ann. Go for it. Yes, so thank you. Hey everybody, I do have to say hi to Marsha and to Jeannie and uh, some of the other folks, Casey. Um, so it's great to be here. Thank you as always. And I apologize, my time is short this evening. Um, but yes, yeah, so one of, um, this is a very common complaint that I hear uh, from my uh, lipedema patients, my lymphedema patients, and then um, an assortment of my patients that might experience a little bit more weight that they're managing in their lower extremities. Um, so just to kind of um, 
kind of give a broad overview of, of, of why knees, ankles, and hips tend to be high pain points. Um, there's, there's a series of kind of underlying elements at play, but a big element um, with, within the lipedema community is going to be um, two kind of core things. We're dealing with potentially some of the lipedema, maybe the lymphedema as well, mm-hmm. in and around the ankles and the knees, behind the knee, and then even in the hip, the inguinal um, region. So that's one aspect that might be at play. The other aspect that um, just many of us suffer from, regardless of, of you know any diagnosed condition, is just the fact that these joints, they bear a lot of, um, of, of pressure, of activity, and um, some of that kind of comes to bear um, comes to light even greater for the lipidemia community because of sometimes the underlying secondary conditions, secondary and tertiary conditions. So that's one of the things that um, is a common complaint. And I think the other complaint that I hear most frequently is that the normal recommendation to side sleep or you know tuck a pillow in is not always a, a feasible option just because of your comfort and then also because of the flip-flopping aspect. So a lot of what I see, Um, and this plays into also working with, um, physical therapy is depending on how your, the, the, the shape of the limb. So let's just take for, for instance, the knees, I think were probably the biggest kind of that middle point. Um, the knees really bear a lot of, um, the physical pressure when we are laying down and depending on how our structure is. So if we are laying down, we're not necessarily kind of bolstering the knees or providing some support, then we might get even more pressure at that joint. And that can cause not just the pain, but also can lead to additional degrees of inflammation. Um, so that's one thing that's at play. Um, and Patty and I have talked, you know, in, in um, previous shows and, and things that she and I have done together with her community. Um, I, I enjoy um, utilizing things uh, and resources uh, like Juzo has their soft compress, the large pad. I, I like to use those tools that can help us motivate the lymph flow while we're in that kind of resting state to help offset some of that accumulation of the fluid retention. So that's, that's one thing. Um, I know one question. I have to interrupt one second, because whenever we talk about moving fluid and getting (laughs) eliminating lymph, I got to say lymphopress is so easy to use and so effective at doing that. That's my little lymphopress commercial had to get it in there. Keep going, Dr. Gallagher. Yeah. So one of the things that, um, you know, I look at with patients when they're complaining about knee pain, I want to know it's, it's location. So are we dealing with inside the joint or are we dealing with outside the joint, this inside of the knee on the outside of the knee, the back Mm -hmm. of the knee, it's going to tell us the location and kind of quadrant of, of pain or residual pain or swelling or inflammation. Those are things to just monitor. So just, you know, from, from that perspective, if we're dealing with inside the knee pain, which is very common, um, it could very well be a sign of either one, a big common uh, occurrence or scenario is osteoarthritis. So Mm. where we actually have the, the knee joint itself is inflamed. There might be some cartilage damage or um, even from previous injuries and even structural imbalances, it can put pressure on that, that joint. And I even see with some of my patients, I want to work with them from a structural perspective because depending on how their body is carrying weight and the hips are the kind of key point. So we wanna make sure we have the proper hip alignment And then if we get our hips aligned, then we'll see the knees and the ankles follow. Um, And and this is important too, when we're looking at that kind of structural alignment, it might be necessary for chiropractic work or some sort of um, supportive work. It's either therapy, you know, physical therapy exercises that help kind of recalibrate that muscle alignment because the body will kind of go you will see the kind of structural offset. If let's say one limb is carrying 
five pounds more than the other. And that could sound like a, a minor difference, even two pounds, but over the course of a day, that variance can have a significant effect on the way, again, if we're looking at the knee, we might have, and if any of you are runners or have ever been fitted for like shoes, walking shoes, and you have them kind of look at how you walk and they go, oh, you're pronating outward or inward. That's also going to tell us how that knee joint with the structure of the knee joint itself. So, you know, you can kind of look at your shoes when you take your shoes off, where's the wear on your shoes. And that can tell us where more of the weight is located. So if it's on the outer part of the shoe, so you flip it back and you say, oh gosh, I'm really wearing out the shoe on that part, that side part or the heel or the, the inner side of that, that shoe, that'll give you a sense too. Cause you can kind of, it's like a ping pong, the body will try and create balance, but we end up seeing a lot of the joints, the hips, the knees and the ankles bear the brunt of that. Wow. So, Chiropractic care is health. It's helpful for kind of recalibrating that hip alignment. Um, a lot of times we'll see the lower pelvic floor, pelvic floor exercises help to support that, that balance of the hips. Um, and then when we're talking about inside the knee pain, then we may be dealing with some inflammation, arthritis. Um, and even, you know, in some cases I have some patients, we get scans, they have bone spurs, it might be bone on bone. So the cartilage has, has kind of worn away. Um, there are a few things that are helpful for that. Um, and I know some of the questions with, um, you know, ligament issues or EDS, which is sometimes, um, a complementary, uh, mm -hmm. underlying diagnosis we then get into how is the body um, articulating uh, the supportive structures? How are we, how is the body articulating collagen to help support our ligaments and, and our tendons to keep our joints in the right alignment? That's the purpose. We're, we're, the goal is to have that be in perfect alignment. So if somebody is dealing with those ligament issues, it might be a good idea to look at some bioavailable collagen to add into their diet. Um, and look at some of those, uh, the more so animal-based um, products that are going to deliver that. Bone broth is really good for delivering glycine and other um, key amino acids for the building blocks for good, healthy collagen structure. Um, and there's also research too, where we um, see that some collagen types, and there's you know, over 26 types of collagen, and mostly I find a lot of my patients are taking type one, but there's a type five and 10 that are more synergistic for the um, joint structures and the ending of those long bones. So let's say the actual femur, we are going to see that there's a, a part uh, where it's bone and kind of cartilage and um, a collagen in its structural alignment where we see the, the bone matrix actually be enhanced with this particular type of collagen. So that's something too, I, I kind of work with patients to figure out how can we use things in our daily lives to be supportive of those, those joints. All right. So um, I got to say, you're an expert, you're unique. You have this voice and this following, and where are you located? We're now in um, the Dallas Fort Worth area. All right. Yay, Dallas. I have yeah. some friends out watching the show in Dallas right now. So where can someone who is in New Jersey get help? I mean, what do they look for when trying to get the kind of help that you are recommending, which is really awesome advice. Yeah. Yeah. So like, a, so as far as like chiropractic care, um, I, my approach with chiropractic care, there are all different types of schools and kind of approaches to chiropractic care for my lipedema patients or any folks that are sensitive to, you know, intense structural alignments. There is a practice in um, the chiropractic community called gentle adjustments. And, and there are doctors, clinicians, the, the chiropractors who will use, um, activation they, they, we call it activators, but it's a very gentle tool. Um, and I, I, that's my preference personally. Like I'd rather go to somebody, I don't need to be cracked and whacked, you know, that's <laughs> very abrasive. And for a lot of the pain bodies, individuals that are dealing with, um, superficial on the skin pain, even just having a chiropractor 
touch their shoulder and their hip just to figure out the alignment and then wow. kind of see where their legs are. And this gets really crazy. I mean, I, I have folks I refer out that will come, come to find out they're off by a quarter of an inch. Like one limb will be longer than another. And sometimes they need an insert in their shoe and boom, it's a magic sauce for that alignment. So there's a lot of depth to that aspect. Um, so, you know, that would be something look for chiropractor in your area that uses an activator and that can be kind of Googled. So it's gentle, gentle chiropractic is kind of the term for it. I, people were hanging on the edge of their seat and also Linda and Khan, I want to give you a moment as well, because there's also questions about supplements for joint pain and knees. I know we talked about collagen, but I certainly want to give you as our other medical expert on the panel. Would you like to weigh in on any I of the would. So that was fantastic, Dr. Melissa. Um, my lipedema patients are usually hypermobile. And so between the excess weight and the hypermobility, and I've found, and I've confirmed this with Dr. Herbst, we find that patients pronate and often have flat feet. So when you do that, then the hip joint goes out as well. And then the knee goes out. And so that is, can be a problem. So, and I like collagen type two for the joints um, and bone broth is great. But as someone said there that sometimes it's histamine. So if you have mast cell activation, you can't do the bone broth, but I always recommend bone broth to help with the gut because that gut microbiome helps with everything. But for the, um, the, 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 the knees, I love red light therapy. I have a torn meniscus. Um, and it's because of the hypermobility because I have lipedema stage one. Um, I love the red light therapy, laser therapy, manual lymph drainage to really, really help with the inflammation. And of course, I'm an aromatherapist. So helichrysum, lavender, um, St. John's wort, if there's pain, I make up a balm for people and I put in a lot of those things depending you know, on what they need. And so those are things that can be really, really important. Then also to strengthen the quads, um, that over there. Um, but it's just the way lippy ladies walk, especially stage two and three. So, um, and then if there's EDS with it, um, it is good to have a knee brace. And I found an amazing um, webinar a lecture by a Dr. Chopra, not Deepak Chopra, but a Dr. Chopra. And he spoke about braces for the knee. And he said, a lot of people say they know good because it will make your muscle not work properly. But he said, it's not for the muscle, it's for the joint. Mm. So he, it's a really fantastic, I can get you the link for that, Brenda. Oh, um, I would love the that. Best, the best lecture on Ellis Dan's loss I've ever, ever seen. So Okay, and I want you to weigh in, Patty, as well. I want to remind everybody because I was furiously taking notes and I bet you were trying to as well. Everybody who is registered will get a link to the replay so you can hit pause and replay. This is rich, really good information. I am really loving it. And I hope you are too. Go ahead, Patty. I just found a video today by a woman who has Ehlers-Danlos and she did the kinesio taping of her knee and she showed how she how she taped it. And it looks so interesting. And I wanted to kind of get a feel from you both to see what you feel with the kinesio taping and uh, your insight on that. I love kinesio taping. I use it for lymphedema, for lipedema, for injuries. Um, it works really well. And I teach the patients how to do it. And it's, it, it lasts usually for about five days. It's waterproof easy to wear. If you're bandaging or compression, you can do that underneath. So certainly many, many tools. With my knee, I'm not going to do surgery. And so I've worked with laser, electroacuscope, lymph, all the things I was talking about. And then the supplements, um, glycosamine and chondroitin. There's so many things that you can do. And then the collagen. Wonderful. A lot of, I know a lot of our stage three ladies like me, we can't really fit a lot of braces. So the kinesio taping seem like a really good alternative. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm going to lose you soon, Dr. Gallagher, because your time is wasting. So I wanna give you the, the floor to any 
final information you'd like to share? I know the audience is groaning and saying, oh, we want her back. So you have an open invitation, but any final words before you have to leave us? Yeah, sure. Well, thank you again for having me on. And I apologize to everybody. Um, my time is short this evening, but yes. So kinesio taping, I love that. Very, very supportive. There is, um, I, I will promise I'll post tonight um, on my Instagram stories. So if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post a book that I use. Um, and it's something that I, I have my patients take at home. It's a really good resource guide. If you want to do uh, kinesio taping for yourselves, that gives you kind of the, the whole way of doing it and application. Um, but yes, highly supportive. I, I think the, the big thing with, um, you know, joint pain and knees and hip pain, um, it, it, the, the, the biggest aspect here is that overall, what we're dealing with systemically. So full body is we're dealing with some degree of inflammation. And I saw some questions about glutathione. I'm a huge fan of looking at eliminating as many of the kind of inflammatory sources in our lives. So from skincare to food that we're eating, our environments, cleaning up our air, cleaning up our water, um, you know, and cleaning up as many of the kind of, um, toxins that we're absorbing every day and every way, um, to really help your body minimize the inflammatory response. And, and, you know, does, do we ever get to a zero inflammatory state? No, but we can definitely greatly help our body, um, respond better and in a healthier way. Um, so that the, it's less responsive to the irritations of pain and swelling. Um, but with that being said, you know, there are some things that I like to recommend. So, you know, CBD is always on my catalog of resources internally, topically, it's a great tool, um, for folks that have the ability in their States to go even more higher potency. That's amazing. Um, and then there's, um, I, I couldn't find the cream because of, um, this evening and I, I have it somewhere else <laughs> for one of our dogs who had an injury, but I use, um, tea relief. Um, and this is, it's, it's, um, it's a brand that used to be heal and it's spun off, but tea relief has, um, it's a homeopathic blend. It has Arnica Montana as one of its core, um, homeopathics, but there's a ton of other wonderful complementary. Uh, pain and swelling, inflammatory reducers that you can take internally. It has, we have liquid, there's a gel and a cream that we can use topically. Um, that's highly beneficial. So, um, those would be, you know, kind of some of my initial recommendations. And, you know, the big thing is pain is an indicator. So I just want to kind of communicate pain is a symptom and it's a language of the body. So anytime you do have pain, uh, don't ignore it you know, so kind of chart out in detail, you know, if there are things that you're doing, or if you notice the kind of activity, kind of having those diaries that helps kind of identify what might the source be that maybe started the, you know, kicked off the pain, but definitely don't not do anything, you know, so that's really important is listen to your body. Pain is a communication tool the body uses to, um, warn you. And so it's a warning mechanism. And especially if it's a sharp shooting, burning pain, that's something that we need to address and have, you know, either a specialist, a, a you know, um, a, a specific knee or hip specialist, um, an ortho ortho surgeon or whomever. But, you know, the key thing is sometimes we have to do testing and we have to do scans but identifying what that source might be. And it might be, you know, part of the lipedema um, that we're dealing with. And it might also be something else. I mean, I know a lot of folks have commented and I've been reading the comments. I know the uh, comments are hot tonight. Yes, it's they're impossible on fire. to keep up with all of it. We love everything you're saying. We hope we get to everything you're saying. But one big question before you go, how can people follow you on Instagram, yeah. Dr. Gallagher? Yes. Yeah. So my Instagram, just like all the other kind of social handles is my business name and it's natural health resources. Um, and I've recently started doing live shows on Amazon as well. So if you're big Amazon consumers, I'm hosting a every Saturday at 9 AM I'm on Amazon live. Um, but yeah, I will post, um, the picture of the kinesio taping, 
resource guide um, after I put my little one down to bed. And so it's a great resource. And we, as therapists, there's a ton of therapists that were in my um, training class that were a part of it. Some were doctors, some were nurses, some were PTs, but it's a highly effective. And, and not everybody talks about this particular um, resource guide, but it's great for patients to grab. Awesome. Well, we applaud you. We thank, thank you. you. And we Thanks wish everybody. you a wonderful rest of your evening. Yes, Thanks for being you here. Too. Bye, I everybody. look forward to seeing you again. And let's get back to the rest of the chat. We've got a lot going on here. Has anyone used and benefited from FSM, microcurrent stimulation? Okay, I'm not seeing any panelists, but Linda Ann Khan, first of all, you're place has all these magical tools that I had never seen before. And I'm sure you're familiar with FSM, microcurrent stimulation. So there's many different kinds of microcurrent. The machine that I use is it's microcurrent, nanocurrent, and picocurrent all together. I'm not familiar with that exact one, but microcurrent is really good for lipedema. Okay. Good to know. I'm going to barrel through some of these questions. Footwear, Foot, you know, because we're talking knees, we're talking pain. Better footwear, will that help with our lipedema? Now, I know some of you actually have brands that you are affiliated with or that you recommend. So feel free to speak now. Go ahead. Uh, so I have difficulty finding shoes especially like before surgery, because my feet would swell really bad. And it wasn't like swelling width wise, it would arch up on the top of the foot. And the top of shoes only stretch so far. Um, I still struggle a little bit. But the two that I wear the most is I wear a classic Birkenstock. It has the best support for my like base of my foot. And the straps I can adjust to fit better and then there's also a company and I know I'm going to say it wrong so I'm just going to spell it but it's p-a-n-d-e-r-e pandeer yeah they um make shoes because the one co-owner has lymphedema and she always struggled to find shoes that like with swelling so there's shoes are all like elastic based straps and I have a couple different, I have a sandal of theirs and I have like a kind of tennis shoe style. They're super easy to get on and off and adjust. And they understand the conditions because they have lymphedema. I've done a couple interviews for them and spoke on their stuff and like love the shoes. Wonderful, wonderful. And you know, I was so impressed when Dr. Gallagher was saying even just a quarter inch lift can sometimes get you and right does anybody else have any advice about shoes and lipedema go ahead Susie Susie don't ever be don't give me your little shy Susie thing we well, don't it's, like I mean I'm not like an expert or anything but I did I, I noticed something when we were in Germany and I had my surgeries I picked up this pair of shoes that were made in Italy and they were like just little tennis shoes and I wore them all over the place um, in Germany, and we, and you know, Dr. Stutz had me walk like every single day. Wow. And um, it was great. Like I never had anything, any kind of reaction. So then fast forward, and I was going to do a fitness program. And I was having really bad difficulty with spasms in my legs and my knees and my joints. And I was like, okay, I'm never going to walk or any of this. It's killing me. Like, this is mm. so terrible to be mm. active was just brutal and a friend of mine is a really amazing PT and he was like no bring your shoes and come see me and I was mm -hmm. like okay so I'm wearing my Italy shoes as my casual crappy shoes right and I come and I bring my fitness shoes and I put them on and he does all these testing things with me and he goes those are terrible take them back and do not wear them to exercise in it's literally trashing your back. And I had two other pairs of tennis shoes. He told me to bring any other ones. And I found that I can't wear the Sacophony ones or any of the high-end brands I couldn't wear. And so then I put on my, my stupid little Italy shoes to leave. And he goes, he goes, can I just, he goes, will you just humor me? I'm like, yeah. So he does all these tests on me and they were perfect. And I was like, that's hilarious and ironic. 
So you say you're not an expert, but we <laughs> learn every time you open your mouth. I mean, everybody's got experiences with shoes. Anybody else want to weigh in on the shoe matter? Go ahead, Patty. Yeah, I do a lot of the CrossFit style workouts. So for me, I needed something that I could squat in and also walk in. And I have been switching between like Asics and Brooks and things like that. And one of the members in my group was talking about the Brooks Ghost being just the most cushioning and walking for miles in it and loves it. And everybody was chiming in. And so I reached out to go take a look at it. And I happened to see the chat button on the side. And I'm like, I'm just going to chat and ask this shoe rep what they think. And I kind of explained that I was a heavy uh, athlete that... I did CrossFit that I did walking and I had an issue with my Achilles area because most shoes dig into the back of my Achilles and it is excruciatingly painful. And they came back and said, we recommend the Rebel. It's the most flat, which is what you want for squatting, but then it also gives you the ability to do walking and it doesn't have as much cushioning as the Ghost, but definitely. So now I've tried both and the Rebel is more comfortable for me, but the ghost was prettier. <laughs> you know, fashion is important. Style, you know, I listen, I'm more likely to go to the gym if I have a cute workout outfit. Absolutely. I may not work out when I get there, but at least I look cute. And that's what's important sometimes. <laughs> and now. you went. And I went, right? I, I had to walk from my car to Cheryl, you had something you wanted to add about shoes. Um, it for me, what I did, um, I had some custom inserts made and so I can move them from shoe to shoe. And so that helps to support the bottom of the foot. Um, and so I, I do have a link in my group. Um, I'd have to dig it up. Um, but uh, you basically with your cell phone, you take pictures of your arch and your foot and they uh, make a custom insert for your foot. And so it was pretty cool. Oh, wow. Really good. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, we have covered the knee, the foot, the shoe. We're moving on. But I want to talk to my girl, Angelique, because first of all, we loved you sharing your gift last month with us. In fact, we'd love for you to sing every month, but we won't make <laughs> you do that. But you've been learning a lot about self-care. And I think that that's a really important topic, especially here it is, it's a new year. A lot of us have intentions for the year. I don't like the word resolutions because I always mess them up, but you know, we have so many things that we want to do, but we've got to take care of ourselves first. And so I love how you have connected the dots between holding yourself accountable with your people and taking care of you. So I'm going to shut up and let you talk now. <laughs> This year, it really wasn't a New Year's resolution. It came about um, because I wanted to date and the dating scene wasn't necessarily panning out for me. So I decided that I was going to date myself and kind of just pamper myself for, you know, some hours out of my weekend. Um, and it just so happened that my mom um, fell and it was the same week that I had decided to start this. She fell, she hit her head and she went into the hospital and subsequently into rehab for a while. Um, but really, when I decided to go ahead and date myself and continue dating myself, even though the situation was so heavy, it kind of gave me the strength to keep going. It made my week just a little bit smoother. Um, I knew that my face was a little bit smoother because I had pampered and nourished my skin and washed my hair really deep and conditioned it and all that type of stuff. But I also knew with this tribe that I couldn't come back at the end of the month and say, I I just let myself fall apart. I knew that I had to be accountable and actually put into myself. I, mean, I think that's really important for those of us that have lipedema because really self-care is part of our journey. So, you know, even with just, you know, you're saying that you're pampering yourself, but if you use a loofah and stimulate your lymphatic system, then you're actually doing something for your lippy body, but you can enjoy it and love on you and have steam and 
wine and music and have time to yourself, but know that it's necessary. It's actually a duty that you owe yourself in order to keep going. And especially when you have so much that the environment is putting on you, your family, children, work, whatever it is, having that time that's set aside for yourself. I think I'm learning now is just it's crucial. It's important. You, you can't let it go. You can't blow it off. You can't just say that it's, um, you can't actually even feel guilty for it. And that's one of the things that I had to come to terms with. I can't feel guilty for taking time to take care of me because once I take care of me, then I can take better care of my mom. I can be more at peace in my dealings. I feel better throughout my day. And honestly, I feel like if it wasn't for that, I probably would be back in the bed. And we know that that leads back to nursing homes. We don't want that. So taking that time to put into yourself, especially when you have lipedema, is so critical. So, you know, Angelique, Every time you speak, I just want to sit and have my heart and my ears wide open because you drop such wisdom that comes from your heart and there is something magical about it. And first of all, all of us in the Lipedema Roundtable family are sending prayers and good vibes toward your mom and to you because it's real life. And you are a wonderful caretaker and you are a wonderful daughter, but I love this idea of taking yourself out on a date. You're so worth it. You are so worth it. And by the way, all of you out there, you're worth it too. And, you know, here it is in 2022, a year where I am believing for all of our dreams to come true. Take yourself out on a date, be good to yourself do that self-care and love on yourself. Cause I always say there's one person you're guaranteed to spend the rest of your life with. And that's you. So I'm taking it to heart and I'm going to follow it. And speaking of self-care. So I go out to San Diego and I just thought I was going to have dinner with Linda Ann Kahn. And she's like, Oh no. In her gorgeous voice, she gives me a full lymphatic massage, which I had never had before an aromatherapy treatment. And then I'm sorry. And I know she's going to be embarrassed me mentioning it, but she has a whole skincare line and skincare is so important for people. I don't care what your condition is. I know it's winter and dry skin is a thing, but I'm always trying to, you know, you know what I mean? Turn back time. <laughs> Anyhow. So her skincare line is called Varenia. And she created herself at Beauty Clinique in San Diego. Just, I want you to just take 30 seconds and tell us about your skincare line. Oh, okay. So I, you know, you know, I'm a lymphedema therapist and an aromatherapist, but I'm also an esthetician. <laughs> so I've been doing that for nearly 40 years. And so I created a skincare line. Varenia means excellence. And there's no garbage in it, no propylene glycol, none of any of that stuff. It's aromatherapy based, peptides and supplements, um, herbal, at uh, least Dr. Herbst and different herbs. And it's very results oriented and it's an anti-aging line. Well, I feel younger already, Linda Ann Kahn, and I just want to thank you for that. And I think, hey, you know, it's part of self-care. It makes me feel good and it smells really good. And the whole earth just turned on its axis just a little bit because <laughs> Dr. Karen Herbst showed up and we know you're so busy. Thank you for being here tonight, Dr. Herbst. How are you? I'm great. And it's so nice to see Linda Ann. Hi, Linda Ann. I know I missed you, Karen. <laughs> I know I missed you too. Yes, and it's and, nice to see everyone else. And we have, well, we're going to give you questions, but I have, I'm going to take this opportunity to make an announcement. Dr. Herbst is part of the Lympha Press family, and she is serving as our medical director, effective January 2022. And that is something that we are so absolutely excited about because it's a perfect marriage of our commitment to the lipedema community mm -hmm. and Dr. Herp's brilliance. And we get to support her and her dreams of research and making headway and answers for 
all of you because we love you and we care about you. So I got to make that announcement. I think that's the first time it's been publicly stated. I think so too. Good. Yeah, and I, I'm really excited because, um, you know, Lympha Press really wants to help the lipedema community and including um, education, awareness, and more research. And I, that's, I'm already hard at work um, figuring things out. So super excited and what a great company. Amazing, really oh. just amazing. Yeah, I got to say it really is. And if we can help you, anybody out there at all, you let us know. We want to help. That's what we're all about, making lives better for people. So Dr. Herb, since I have you, I have this question and I didn't even know how to pronounce it, but you'll know exactly what Jessica Souza is talking about here. Is there any connection with lipedema causing hypoalbuminemia, low albumin protein? No, but if you have low albumin, albumin, blah, 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 low albumin. Oh, I feel so much better. Dr. Herbst also fumbled it. Yeah, I'm good. You, you would definitely get some more swelling and that could make your lipedema worse. And so figuring out why you have low albumin is really important. And the two main causes tend to be that there's um, decreased albumin production by the liver or you're losing protein in your urine. Oh, and, and, yeah. and if in the protein in your, in your blood vessels kind of sucks water to it and holds water in the vessels, if your albumin is low, it, the water just leaks out into the tissue, which we know can exacerbate lipedema, lymphedema, venous disease. Wow. Thank you for that answer. That is really interesting. Sandy Darley has a question. Can Durkham's or lipedema impact the lungs? Okay. So um, there seems to be a, a, a quite a few patients with Durkheim's disease who have shortness of breath. And some of them are even on oxygen. And despite multiple scans, multiple pulmonologists, they cannot figure out why that is. And I think it might have something to do with the lymphatic system. Mm. If, if a woman with lipedema develops lymph lymphedema and it's uncontrolled, meaning you don't have compression garments, you don't have a pump, you're not doing any exercise, you're not getting care for it at all, then it can definitely cause shortness of breath in the long run if the lungs would fill up with fluid. But that is so very, very, very rare. Mm. Okay. What about migraines? There's some chat going on right now about migraines. Is it common for those with lipedema to have migraines? And by the way, show of hands, anybody with lipedema here? F Pale ginger pear absolutely said she's faced it. Oh, Linda Ann Kahn as well. Is there any connection there? Guy? Oh, and, and Dr. Hurt. <laughs> so um, migraines can be a vascular disease. So it's kind of um, hyper reactivity of the vessels in the brain. So if you have lipedema and you have microvascular disease, macrovascular disease, migraines would go right along with it. And many people with Durkheim's disease also have migraines. Oh, okay. And, so, and like, I think it might be linked to EDS as well. So if you have poor connective tissue in, in your vessels, you might have irritable vessels in your brain. So if you, if, you, if you become emotionally stressed, your vessels may contract and then dilate. And it's that dilation of the vessel that, that causes the pain. Pale Ginger Pear, you wanted to add something to that. Yeah, I, for years, was waking up daily with migraines and was taking medicine and it would work for a while. Then that medicine would stop. So I'd switch medicine. And I hate taking a daily medicine. I don't like a lot of chemicals in my body if I don't because I never know what causes issues with me so I, I like to avoid so after like reading and doing some stuff I went and I had my dace pierced which is like an inner part by the ear um I had both of them pierced like six or seven years ago have not had a migraine since really it's supposed to be like an acupressure point um, I was afraid to change the jewelry out for my first surgery from metal to plastic because I was like, what if messing that up changes it in their back? But I've had no issue, no migraine. 
Well, yeah. we're glad to hear that because that can be debilitating. Absolutely. Francine Schwartz, we love you. You're out there. We know that you use your lymph press all the time. Wants to know what can be done to get rid of a fibrotic lobule that is hanging over her kneecap. We're not giving any advice, Linda Ann, advice, but go take for that it. One. Okay. Oh, Linda Ann. So the fibrotic nodule, we do cross fiber work. We also work with the laser because it's a it's an infrared laser, it's a cold laser, and it's very, very pointed. And then the last year or so I've been working with cupping. I use the lymph touch because we have a professional one, but you can do cupping at home. You can also get the cupping with a suction, you know, with a, a like a little something that pulls up to suction it. So that's what I do with that. Okay. And then I teach the patient also how to do that. I have a patient who has Durkham's and lipedema who's waiting for surgery, but I've been working on her for a year and a half. She asked me for her pictures when she arrived. I have to send them to you, Karen. I sent them to her and then she put them all together, what she looks like now and from when she started. No surgery. She said, my counseling and the treatment is working. I, all of what I'm talking about, I did on her. It's unbelievable. She still will have surgery. Please God, the insurance comes through. But it's incredible to see. Wow. Yeah. Does, does she have an does Instagram have account? Nodules? Hmm? Does she have an Instagram account? I, sh I No, I don't think she does. Oh, I should ask her. Oh. No, I don't yes. think she does. Well, uh, hey, we've got five more minutes. Get, yeah. Text her and find out. I'll find out. Um, is there I'll, a brand yeah, of right cupping? Now. Is there a brand of cupping or laser that is recommended? Or do we just say Google it and we don't necessarily want to say if there's a particular brand? Well, the silicon <laughs> cupping. So go on, you go on, Cheryl. You talk about it. Sure. Cheryl, you talk about it while she texts. Go for it. Sure, sure. Uh, for, for cupping, um, there's very inexpensive sets that you can get on Amazon. Um, so it, Lindy Ann was just about to talk about the silicone cups. Um, there's also plastic cups that have a, a little vacuum pump and you just squeeze it with your hand and it will pull the suction in the cup. Um, I, I wasn't a huge fan of the silicone. I know a lot of other people are fans of the silicone cups. Um, for me, I had trouble getting uh, a good amount of pressure on it without having huge amounts of pain, which I do want to tell you when you first start cupping, it is going to hurt like the worst thing you have ever done in your life. Ooh. So, because it's pulling up on that fibrotic tissue. So you want to be able to have a way of controlling the pressure on it um, and just do very, very light pressure when you're first starting out until you're able to pull up the pressure. Um, I had someone in town who actually had a variable pump that he hooked his cups up to. And so he was able to uh, do it. He called it medicupping. Um, mm -hmm. And he turned his machine all the way to the lowest setting. Uh, when I first came, he was amazed at how sensitive we are to it. Oh, but wow. by the time treatments, I was better than uh, other people, like the normal population starting out. So you can uh, overcome and uh, yeah, it, huge improvement with cupping. Oh, thank I you so it. much for sharing that. You know, I had this whole list of topics I wanted us to get to tonight, but we went where the conversation took us and where the questions took us. We are so appreciative of your questions. In fact, Dr. Herbst and I have been talking about doing a Ask Dr. Herbst regular segment on social media. So send your questions to me and we will whip up some answers in our wonderful studio of awesomeness to serve the lipedema community. Uh, when we send you the link to the replay, we'll send you certainly my email so that you can send me your questions. It's going to be such an honor. It already has always been such an honor to work with you, Dr. Herbst, and to support the amazing work that you're doing. We are so running out of time. I have like two minutes. There was something else I really wanted to say, and it was brilliant. Oh, I know what. Next month is Galentine's month. 
It's February, and just like Angelique is taking herself on a date, we're taking all of you on a date with us. So wear your red, bring your chocolate if, if you can have chocolate. And I am thinking at least one of us needs to have Nita Cluis be our gal pal and join us. What do you think? Yeah. Nita, will you join us next month? Everybody is saying thumbs up. So I hope that you'll comment yes, that you'll join us from Lympha Press, from all of our amazing panelists. We heart you, we thank you. We are cheering you on. Take yourself on a date and don't forget to set the date for next month, our Galentine's Day show. We'll see you then. Take care, everybody. We love you.